If you love what we do, then please consider supporting Cryptfail on Patreon. Your support helps us grow and to create more content more often. And now, on with the show. Battle Lords of the 23rd Century! <laughs> Uh, the last thing that was said to you guys was from Captain Smith. Mm. The doc says that they've been ripped to shreds. Here's the location of the attacks and the noises. Roger will guide you from here using your commos. He will also tell you if it's safe to shoot without endangering the structural integrity of the station. You are aware that this station is very old. Uh, there's also no surveillance in the service tunnels. and We have limited remote access to the systems down there. Most of them uh, probably have to be accessed manually. This resort is actually built on a retrofitted mining station and the guts of the old girl are quite antiquated. There's no surveillance or monitoring in the tunnels um, and most of the gear down there was designed to be uh, manually operated. They, of course, installed pressure loss sensors but that's about the extent of the monitoring down there. We'd like you to get started as soon as possible. Clemens will get you the jumpsuits you can wear over your uniforms and he'll escort you and your gear to the access point. Clemens soon comes back to the control room, handing you each your uniforms that you'll uh, pull over your uh, existing clothes. There's a A-grav cart just sitting outside with all your weapons um, in it. Um, and the weapon cart is uh, covered with a tarp. Clemens sits there, and, or not sits there, stands in front of you while uh, watching you uh, uh, try to work out how to put on the jumpsuits. Are they particularly difficult to put on? No, they've got a, like a zipper at the front, but like sort of someone the size of a ram python might have a little uh. bit of difficulty. So, do you guys have any questions before we set off? Clemens says. Uh, do we have any idea what's down there? Something with claws? Any nearby alien planets that are inhabited? Anything like that? Uh, um... I thought we went over this. Um, it was an interstellar debris storm that cycles through the nebula every thousand years, and we just happen to be at the end of that 1,000 years. I see. I and was just looking for other other possible explanations. Well, nothing until then. As soon as we got hit, it was momentarily after that, that stuff started going on downstairs. Yes, yes, yes. You see, the, the, we didn't really detect anything until uh, we scoured the security logs from down there after uh, the, the, the few people that we sent down had gone missing, says Rogers. And there are no records whatsoever of this debris field hitting anything before. You're talking very differently than you were last time, whatever your name is. More chipper. You sounded happier. Yeah. I'm an amorphous blob, and my voice changes a lot depending on... Um, oh, good excuse. How I am feeling, and you just threw up right next to me. I'm not feeling great. I'd say I'm sorry, but I'm not particularly. Chris, can you absorb stuff into your body? I can. Hey, so anything you absorb is there forever. 
Could you smuggle someone inside? Like if they had an oxygen tank, could you like smuggle them inside you? They'd be visible. Yes. You could just see somebody in there, though. I can become solid. Wait, what? I can change my shape and texture. Yeah, but shape is texture. Texture. Yeah. And I will morph into a perfect replica of you. You will? I do that. What? That... That is an action that I am taking, not... It is an action that my character is taking to morph into Emily's character. Which I believe I can do at will. Oh, that's just annoying. So, Zach points to Clemens and go, uh, says, Me, Zach. You lead, you point, Zach kill. He brings many smiles. Lemons looks up. Mm. Uh, right, okay. As he sort of uh, steps on one foot and then another, sort of turns around, looks up at the Ram Python with a raised eyebrow. You not understand, Zach? Looks over at Archiac. Are you able to keep this one under control? I ain't got no control. That's what makes me so lovable. Zach grabs him by the scruff of his, the front of his coat or whatever. And, no, you lead. You point. Zach, kill. Put the nice man down, Zach. Zach, no kill if you no point. Zach. And Clemens is looking very almost insulted. At, at being called a nice man. Yeah, no, at being pulled up by the scruff of the neck. Oh, just not necessarily lifted off the ground, just grabbed him like just to because he was focusing attention over to the to Aaron's character. He's what are you doing? Saying, no, you lover. don't understand me. <laughs> me only kill who you point for me to you. kill. <laughs> Get your ram python under control. As he um, says that to Archiac. He's like the whole circus. You are the lead of this misfit outfit, aren't you? No. I'm the charisma and the looks of this misfit outfit. <sighs> so who is supposed to be looking after this brute? He is. He's his keeper. Who is his keeper? He is. Who, who, can, who can control a ram python other than a ram python? Ah, yes. But if you're asking who's the leader of the group, it's she. She is. She is. She is. That one. And she is. He he looks confused, and he's sort of he's holding. He's like got both of his hands around Zach's big. Big hand, <laughs> and he's trying to pull himself away. Uh, not, not, not yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I didn't. I'm not like beating him up or anything. No, no, no. no, no. no. But he's got his hands because you, you know, drew them by the scruff. He's just trying to get he, you to let go of his shirt. Not like he doesn't get, think you're yeah. killing him or anything. He's yeah. just like, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Um, if you'll follow me, then I'll guide you to the service tunnels. And you got to remember, you're not the team you need. You're the team that you deserve. He is the team he deserves. Good. You get what you pay for, okay? <laughs> you guys weren't paid much. My point exactly. Um, so, I'm assuming Zach will let go of Clemens. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. He's the leader. I would never allow him to be harmed. Clemens uh, beckons you to follow him. Uh, he passes by the, the, the grav cart with uh, Rogers uh, following in hot pursuit. He's going, oh dear, oh dear. 
I hope this not going to become a troublesome uh, mission. And he points to the graph cart. There's your, your weapons will be under there. But please do not get them out just yet. Not until we at least get into the service elevator. All right. And the writhy looking man uh, follows Clemens. Uh, and uh, they start walking down the brightly lit uh, uh, corridor into the main section. And everything is just pure. I'm assuming you guys are following, right? Not yep. Control room game. <laughs> <laughs> no I mean I'm following I can't speak for anyone else everything is pure white and you reach this like a large circular central uh, room and high above is just glass uh, like a glass dome uh, which looks out into the netherness of space and you can see the nebula up there within this large atrium there are literally hundreds of people all well dressed um well many are well dressed um some not so your group is a, a group that stands out uh, more for the fact that you're all wearing service jumpsuits than than anything but every one seems to have a place to go or you know, uh, something to, to look at. There's um, uh, lots of um, like 3D uh, viewers on display showing the nebulae, nebulae, nebulis, nebulu, showing the nebula. I've got to say, I'm not overly fussed with the colour of these jumpsuits. And the jumpsuits themselves are white. And they've got the logo of the Crystal Palace. Um, with the big uh, zip up the front. Not very practical, that's for sure. Not very interesting. Zach looked better in dark clothes. Maybe there's a suggestion box somewhere. What color do you think would look better? Then white? Mm hmm Well, if they're service jumpsuits and the people wearing them are supposed to be, you know, working. I don't know, anything that doesn't show dirt? Well, in fairness, Roger pipes in, uh, most of these services have uh, been conducted up here. Very rarely uh, do the service technicians need to go into uh, the bowels of the Crystal Palace. Uh, the old... Uh, uh, mining rig, as you might call it, um, is or was fairly reliable, and we don't use a lot of the systems uh, that run from down there. So, we service very high clientele up here. We need to be presentable to those clients. So, having white jumpsuits. You can't be presentable in dark grey duck grey that's very drab no duck grey duck grey what are you yeah. on about duck grey you know those earth creatures have what? four legs and chase mice no, and go quack not I quite. have no idea what a duck is it's a bird right Birds. Duck grey. It's kind of green. <laughs> Clemens looks confused as he's sort of, you know, sidestepping at one point. He shakes his head almost dismissively and hops after Clemens, who's just ignoring you all completely. Zach <laughs> scratches his head and, and says to him, White suit not look good with blood of Zack's enemies. It is true. It's a good point, Zack. I say, I say. Would you not mind keeping so it discreet. down back there? <coughs> Let's talk about blood, please, and more talk about um, nothing. <laughs> We're almost there. How many of your clientele are you prepared to lose as collateral damage? 
Clemens stops. I I don't think the clientele is going to be in the tunnels. Arcaic. Runs into him and turns around and collateral damage. What are you talking about? Well, it's a big beastie, right? If it gets out, or if there's more than one. Which is why you guys are here. Okay, it's your job to stop collateral damage. And would you mind keeping it down until at least we get into the elevator, which happens to be just behind me, as you can see. So none. He puts his, he right. puts his finger up to his lips. Is there? Are there any resort guests around who are staring yes. at us saying this? You have resort guests, you know, walking past. But, uh, you know, so most of them are pretty self-absorbed. Some catch bits and pieces like blood and you'll have them looking over, uh, sort of catching parts of the conversation. Clemens turns and pushes a button. All right. Terrible. Get in the elevator. Uh, who's dragging the grave card? Zach will drag it. All right. So the elevator is just big enough to to fit the the crew in with the grave card. And there's probably about thirty buttons, ranging from uh, ten going up, and the other ones, the rest of them going down. Sub level. This is a service elevator. It looks different to the other elevators that are around, but it obviously looks like a uh, service elevator. Um, it's got a on the front before you walk in. It says employees only. So I'm assuming this grav cart has like a. It's covered so that the people can't see the. With a top, yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So Zach's Zach's kind of whispering to the to the guns and don't worry, friend. You see soon. Blanket keep guns warm. Even the top is white. And it's got a big Crystal Palace logo on it. The whole area of um the whole place, Crystal Palace, is stands out as a stark contrast to the rest of the galaxy you know where you grew up where you lived where Bert Smirks is you know a lot of the especially the system planets the core planets that are closer to the wormholes are highly populated with massive you know, story buildings and uh, traffic flying and driving everywhere you go and there's always dust and pollution in the air. Everything's always dirty, but everything is dirty. You can never seem to get anything clean. But here, especially uh, around where the, the guests are, is really, really clean. At smooth at first, and then uh, as it gets to the uh, lower levels, uh, it starts clunk, clunk, clunking um, until you reach uh, a sub level, around sub level three out of ten. Two very dimly lit corridor and the walls and the surface have rust on them there's uh, water dripping down at points along the uh, down the corridor and the corridors the, the corridor itself is only two meters wide and about three meters tall so it's not very roomy that looks to be in fairly poor condition like it's hasn't been used very much um, there's no evidence of anything immediate or damage uh, like that but 
one of the lights is uh, flickering on and off down the corridor. You can tell that uh, this area hasn't been maintained very well. In addition to the dimly lit corridors, there's pipes of different colour and of all diameters which line the corridor as well. And for anyone who can see a distance, uh, you can see uh, a few sets of metal doors going down this corridor. All right. We're here. Good. All right, big man. I, 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 I dare say you should uh, uh, get your equipment ready. I'll stand behind you. Zach smiles a big smile. Ah, bring it on. He throws the the tarp off the grav cart and reaches down and grabs the, the minigun, puts the shotgun in a holster on his back, and same with the longsword, and he carries the minigun. My, my, do you need that many barrels? To Zach, sir? Just kind of looks at him. Zach, no understand. You point, Zach shoot, Zach kill. Clemens' da- eyes darts around. Uh, okay. Yeah, Tara will grab her weapon off the cart. Uh, the slime still with the squat disguised as Terra goes over to the cart and grabs an M20 blaster. Has- goes over to his didgeridoo case and unlocks it and then he snaps it open and LEDs light up takes out his sniper rifle and it's got a red belly black snake painted on both sides of the barrel it's got kangaroos and wallabies on the uh, on the stock and it's got Sydney Harbour Bridge on one side and Do the Brisbane River on the other Do you even know what that stuff is? You didn't know what a duck was yeah, I know what this is. He points at the kangaroo. This is a koala. Hmm. And he points at the snake and he said, That is a go, Anna. Okay. All right, we're zero for two. And all right. And then he takes out three magazines and a bunch of energy cartridges and he starts loading the car- cartridges into the magazines. And then he puts them into different pockets on the jumpsuit and then some extra cartridges and slides the magazine into the rifle. But he does not load one into the chamber. Everybody ready? Um, well, Zach will obviously have his... take the time to load up the, uh, the minigun. But after that, yes, I am ready to roll. Yep. Clemens uh, walks out of the uh, the lift elevator um, and waits for the team to uh, exit. You're ready too, whatever your name is? I'm always ready. That's a different voice again. I have many talents. He's going to just change his voice every time. <laughs> Yeah, Zach's looking at Terra. What you not understand? He say his voice change all the time. I'm just saying it was pretty consistent for like the two days we were we were on that transport, and now all of a sudden it's changing every five minutes. Now he's stressed. Mm. Combat always changing. Voice change, changes. actions change. He changes back into a blob. Chaos is life. Oh. Embrace Don't point it. out inconsistencies in my character. In your what? 
my personality. Okay, stop looking like me and I will. He's not currently looking like you. No, I know. She means don't do it again. And Clemens no. is pointing down the hole. Down the um, tunnel. Says that! He's pointing! Don't shoot the wall, please. He's not pointing at anything to shoot yet. Zach can see in dark, but Zach not have good vision. Tara starts walking down the hallway. That's my way of telling you I have a minus 30 on vision checks. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> just I in case I'm there was bad. any confusion about that. <laughs> I've just got zero Roger, Roger. for all those. Exactly. As everyone uh, gets out of the... Uh, the lift. Clemens press um, types some code into a key code on the outside of the lift, and the doors. And as the door closes, he sort of looks like he thinks to himself, but shakes his head dismissively. Okay, and Roger sort of pipes up. If you will uh, follow me, uh, I'll will. Uh, uh, guide you to the uh, last location where we uh, recorded or picked up those noises and he leads you down uh, the tunnel and is he gets to uh, an intersection uh, you pass by some uh, metal doors uh, that are locked so even testing them as you walk past you'll note that um, all the doors um, a sealed shut. Now, uh, was were we going left or uh, wait? Um, left or right? Uh, right, definitely right. I think. Okay. So, and this happens a few times as he leads you down. He seems to be pretty incompetent. He doesn't look as though he's very um, experienced. And after you. After a se several turns, you round a uh, left-hand bend at an intersection, across the intersection where the tunnels meet, where there looks like there's some of the lights are out. You see the body of a person lying in the middle of the tunnel. It's dressed. It's dressed in um, ordinary clothes, um, a pair of jeans, not great, but good quality, um, some uh, uh, well-to-do uh, boots, uh, and a, like a silk uh, long sleeve shirt. The identifying characteristic of this body is that it's male human and missing its head. That's not one of your precious clients, is it? Oh, oh dear. It says Roger. As he takes a few steps back. And Clemens steps forward. Hmm. Perhaps and... one of your missing men? No. Wouldn't they be in uniform? This isn't missing. the missing maintenance worker. Let me check. And Clemens rifles through... Uh, some of the pockets and pulls out uh, some ID. Uh, Alfred Manford. And do you know who that is? Uh, he pulls out a little data pad. Her. Huh. Guest. Solo yeah. stay. And why would one of your guests be in the maintenance tunnels? Clemens looks around. Mm, looks at the headless corpse and his head follows a trail of blood that leads off down the corridor down the tunnel so who wants to go down the scary dark path first too indestructible not indestructible aren't you hard to destruct are you suggesting that I go first yeah that was the implication Okay. You were the one going on and on about how this will be a great adventure, so have at it. To Zach, be ready to bring many smiles. Zach, ready. 
But really, why would one of your guests be down here? I don't know. Maybe they got dragged down here. Oh dear, I do believe that this... Uh, the trail leads off to uh, a storage room. Is anyone above three meters tall? <laughs> I can be. Is anyone above certainly... three meters? Oh, you can be, but currently, is anyone above uh, three meters tall? Yeah, it's about one meter or less. One foot. No, I'm 2.82. Okay, so your, your head's almost hitting the ceiling, Mr. Ram Python, sir. All right. Roger, you stay at the back. We'll go in first. Uh, what's your name? As he points to Fwamp. Whatever you want to call me, I'm good with anything. He's being difficult about it. Just say something. Uh, Blobby? Sounds think... great. Alright. Alright, Blobby. You lead the way. And he will make his way forward. It's probably important to note that he is negative 10 to his vision, meaning he can only see about 10 meters in front of him. Uh, okay. at the best of times. But yep. his hearing is 100, which I think is the best possible. I don't know if that's true. Here's everything. But his hearing is really good. Same with his smell, which is 75. Oh, you can smell. He basically uses forms of echolocation by slapping his body against the ground as a slime and, like, feeling vibrations. Hey, I hearing, but not smell. The vibrations. Uh, don't worry about the that part. He's got like six noses if he wants. All right. As you uh, head down the tunnel, which is um, very darkly lit at this point, um, you get to uh, a. You can see pyramidal doors, and looks like one's been uh, ripped almost not off its hinges but pushed into uh, where it would normally retract and it's uh, stuck at an angle big enough for um, probably uh, a human to get through if they crawled and the blood trail leads through the uh, sort of triangular uh, opening at the bottom of the door into uh, what looks to be like a, a, a small storage room and the smell of blood is sort of overpowering at, at this stage it's in the air everywhere and rust there's a lot of iron in the air I'll scout ahead and kind of slide across the floor of the storage area you slide in through the uh, the hole at the bottom of the door, or between the doors. Uh, is anyone else following, or just you going in? Um, I don't know. Can Zach get in there? Fit? No, no, I don't think so. Yeah. No, a small human can fit in, but yeah. Yeah, it's hanging back. Blobby inside is what seems to be definitely a small storage room or once was a storage room uh, cans um, of out of date food some boxes out of date food um, a litter shelves uh, shelves all along each wall and there's uh, two uh, lots of shelves in the middle of the room. One of them have been has been knocked over and is resting against the other one. Um, the room itself is dark, except for the light that is shining through an irregularly shaped hole about half a meter in diameter in the ceiling, which is uh, about three meters above the floor. The hole appears to have been clawed through. Uh, from below and you can see bits of uh, clothing almost being torn off as 
looks to be like the the guest that you had seen earlier had been dragged through this hole and wasn't big enough to actually fit him. So it looks like they attempted to drag him through but couldn't because he's still down here. Is that? Or it was dragged down from above. It was dragged down from above. But the hole opens upward? Like... Yeah, the way you said it made it sound like whatever clawed its way through was in the storeroom and clawed up. Is that true, or did they claw down? The hole appears to have been clawed through the ceiling from below, and the guest was pulled down through the jagged metal uh, ah, hole. Yeah, so something clawed uh, its way up, yeah. went and got a guest, yeah. pulled him down. Yep, I see. and okay. the hole wasn't quite large enough for him to fit through, so um, resulting in uh, uh, bits of hair and clothing being stuck on jagged pieces of metal. And okay. there is a light that is shining through uh, the hole. There's dried blood around the hole. All right. Uh, he doesn't think he has quite enough to report back yet, so he's going to slop his way up to beneath the hole and look up. You can only see about 10 meters. Yeah. Um, well, it's a lot brighter in there, and you can see um, the inside of a low-grab racquetball court. The court is currently empty, but you notice that there's blood stain around the hole in the court's floor. I will stretch, uh, making very long legs beneath myself, and stretching a large eye stalk up through the hole, uh, and kind of looking around at the um, floor level. You can see the racket court. Um, uh, blood stains around uh, the hole. Uh, looks like there's been uh, claw marks as well, um, like almost like there's been resistance, and the claw marks have been to to force this person, this poor person, down the hole. Do I see any like? other exit to the the racket room no there is an ex exit but it is um a set of double uh doors which are currently closed i will go back into my slug like slime form and move my way over to back to the hole that i came in through yep uh it it looks like whatever was here Grabbed someone from the racquetball courts, and well, that's them. And I, I gesture with an appended appendage to the deceased. Uh, yes. You might want to close your racquetball courts. Oh dear! Oh dear! Oh dear! Oh dear! No! 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 This can't be! No! And Roger suddenly, in in the dark light, you can see him visibly go pale. And he turns and bolts down oh. the tunnel and rounds the corner and disappears. <laughs> you can hear the clanking of his feet <laughs> pounding on the uh, the rusted metal floor as he's running through uh, the tunnels. And, and he's yelling... Uh, incoherent uh, words at this stage. Shall we go after him? Is he heading back towards the, the surface? He, he looks like he's headed back the way that you came from. He's headed back to where we started if he doesn't get lost. Then he'll be fine. I'm not so sure he's not gonna take a wrong turn and get himself eaten, but... All Is right. it a multiple choice question? Sure, yes. The options are A, go after him. B, don't. B. Well, he was our guide. There is that. Alright. I think I know where we are. I can at least get us to the ventilation room. Well, I'll tell you what. I can at least get us to the racquetball court. Not all of us. Zach wouldn't fit through the door. 
Yeah. Did I see any other exit to the storage room? No other exit a... other than the one that you went through. Or the two that you went through. Oh, did I find the head at all? No. No head. Well, I, I don't think there's any reason to to go in there. I couldn't find the head, nor any sign of the creature other than the massive hole in the ceiling leading to the racquetball court. Now you're a fancy slime. I was always a fancy slime. No, you weren't three days ago. Clemens? Yeah? You sure? With any sense of certainty that said beastie is even down here now and isn't up through the racquetball hole just waiting for more delectable clientele to munch their heads off. If it's got to root up, there's no reason it would have to stay down here now if it doesn't want to. That's exactly my point. Well, we still have the missing maintenance worker. I didn't see the creature when I was looking up through the hole. Uh, I also didn't see anyone else. I suppose our client may have been playing racquetball solo. Um, there was a no loser. damage to the, to the walls in there, either. So, that Blobby was the, um, the racquetball court, uh, the doors closed? Yes, oh, the doors were very closed. Okay. But if they're not locked, we don't. This thing might be able to open a door. Well, we have no the only way it. that you can get in through the doors is using a key card. It might have one now. Did anybody check the body? I did think as soon as I got his ID, that's all we needed. I guess we would have to go back and check the body for the key card. How smart. Is this beastie compared to your average clientele? How do I know how smart they are? We don't know what it is, so... It's a hostile alien life form, that's all I know. Smart enough to wait in racquetball court. Technically so's, uh, Ram python -y. Yes, but everyone here is part of the Alliance. Howls are not part of the Alliance. Could have a different type of hal, hostile alliance life form. You have your bears on the on your planet, right? Yeah, I mean it's it's not my planet. Okay. Is a bear part of the alliance? No. I don't know. I've never asked. All right, come on, let's go. We'll go back to the body and I'll go search the other pockets. I'm not saying it took a key card. I'm just saying we can't know. I don't get paid enough for this. And Clemens None of us are getting paid off. enough for this. <laughs> Clemens starts walking off towards the where the body was. <laughs> Did you find anything? Emily looks like Emily looks like she's like <sighs> and I'm the leader of this group. <sighs> hey, that was not a position I volunteered for. Make make your leader proud, people. <laughs> That's like no way. You're right. Uh, I'm not seeing the beastie out here. As you get back to the body, Clemens bends down and uh, checks the other pockets and pulls out a key card. Uh -huh. So did you find anything? Clemens holds up the key card. Or did you not go anywhere, Archiac? <laughs> I'm still in the hall! Someone's got to watch the hall! What was the uh, point of all this? Did you seriously think everyone was going to pull on you to a small room and everyone's going to like pour through this dead body? What would be the point of that? I'm out here with the big guy! Oh, the body's not in the little room. Oh, the body's not in the little room. The body's in well, the I didn't know hall. that! It's well, I'm back sure. at the, <laughs> Whatever. It's back at the cross intersection. Oh, God. Oh, my God. What? Who do you guys work for? Yes, I've got the key card. All right. If you'll come back down this way, I'll take us to the ventilation room, and then we can go from there. Uh. All right. Everybody ready? 
Yeah. Back. Lead on. Of course. Then follow Clemens. And you head off down the dark, wet, dimly lit tunnel. Every other uh, light is flickering. Other service lights are out, leaving entire uh, sections dark. And you can begin to hear the hum of uh, machines like air compressors and rotor fans in the distance and as you get closer the sound of whooshing air being pushed through the ductwork fills uh, the area and it's becoming very it's becoming a lot more difficult to actually hear each other the sound of your footsteps no longer echoes in your ears as you near the ventilation room the doors are open and above it is stenciled ventilation room uh, you're at a point where it is almost impossible to hear yourself even through the commos Clemens yells something and then points inside. As the dirty guards enter the room, they're confronted by a body on the floor, which looks like it's been ripped to shreds. Its head sits some two meters from the rest of his corpse. Blood and guts have been strewn throughout the room and cover all surfaces. He lies. Well, most of him lies about one meter from the, from the main control panel. Uh, next to his body lay two canisters and inside the ventilation room there's these big like uh, rotary fans that are pushing air um, up from deep below a huge uh, so cylindrical tunnel that stretches down and surrounding it is look it looks like automated old mechanical uh, systems mm. almost industrial basic buttons and levers but one know. system has a screen on it that says all systems nominal and the room itself is roughly 10 meters by 10 meters uh, but it's uh, round like um, cylindrical with a catwalk going around either side all right so i probably should note that uh, my character does not wear a helmet and has really good hearing, uh, but has the ability to dull the healing. The hearing. The healing? Good. Minus 100. Well, I've got 20 to start with, so that probably would not be good. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, many of the pipes that le leading from the, um, uh, the tunnels uh, actually stream into this room and uh, converge on the far wall and run down multiple dark meter wide ducks running off into ducks? the um, the station ducks ducks duck duck are they green duck not all ducks are green okay <laughs> these ones gray this was no racquetball accident what's with this thing and decapitating people you notice that one of the canisters has been hooked into the station's air supply. I thump Clemens and point at the canister. And then I take out my tape measure and measure the body and hold up, pointing at 170. <laughs> Clemens bends down next to the body and then looks at the head and then picks up uh, a little ID tag and looks up at Terra and then slashes his hand across his neck as and then shakes his head and points out he's dead 
I think we know that. Point, and, he, and, he, and he points out the door. He seems to have a concerned expression on his face. Oh, yeah, he's just telling you that the guy's dead, lost his head. His head's gone. Yeah. Hey, you. Him? His head's totally gone. <laughs> Thanks. Well, when he shakes his head after making the, the like universal kill signal, he's thinking, oh, he's not dead. <laughs> I know his head's off and his guts are everywhere, but I checked his pulse and he seems to be doing okay. <laughs> Band-aid or two and he'll be fine. All right, um, and his he, he heads he out of the room. Out the door, or yep, and he and he walks out of the room. Okay, Tara will follow him. He examines the control panel to the doors and presses the keys, and the doors sort of they try to close, but they don't close. And he sort of yells something at you and points to the ram python. Zack. And back at the doors. What? Zack turns around. He, and he mouths. He's something about doors and he points to the ram python and holds up his palms up and closes them together. You want him to close the doors? And he holds up his hand to his ear, and he turns his ear closer to you, and he turns back and he goes, Mouths, what? Do we have, like, data pad things? Yes. Okay, Tara's gonna pull hers out and type you want him to close the doors and hold uh, it up? Yes, and he does a big nodding gesture as if... <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, then Tara will go back in where it, it's quiet enough to talk, I believe. Or no. no? It, it, it's, it's still quiet too loud in outside. There? It's, oh. very, it's very noisy inside the room. Like, you can't... Wait, we it's... went outside, so why was why can't I hear him then? Oh, I'm yeah, hearing. outside, immediately outside, the noise is still going out, so it's it's pretty loud. So closing the doors will obviously help. Okay, so Tara will go back in, um, back on the data pad, type close the doors, and show it to Zach. Point at the doors. All right, Zach looks at the data pad, looks at the doors, looks at Tara. Looks back at the data pad, and then turns and goes to the doors. He kind of shrugs his shoulders, goes to the doors, and attempts to close them. Make a strength roll. Oh, uh -huh, the second uh, roll yeah. of the game. <laughs> okay, so I rolled twenty-four. Oh well, My yeah. Strength you strength is one ten. Yeah, yeah. I was going to give you a a, a, a penalty of um, forty, but. You okay. succeed. I still came in way under. Zach manages to slide the doors closed. Are you inside the room or outside the room? Because Clemens is outside the room. Um, where is the rest of the party? I went inside the room. I don't know which side Zach went on. Uh... I assumed so, that if he wanted the doors closed, he was going to follow in too. So if he didn't, sorry. Clemens is outside the room. He wants. I would look at him to motion if he wants to come inside or not. Um, and he looks at you with it. Cocks his head to the side, raises his hand and motions for, well, someone at least to come out. Uh, you don't know whether he's meaning the whole group, but you sort of think that that's probably... Okay, uh, so I will go yeah. on the outside then with him yeah. mm -hmm. and close the doors. <laughs> I will look at <laughs> back to the inside to see the group, and I will point to the outside. And if okay. See what if they he points, do, I will go. If he points, yeah. I will go back out. Uh -huh. I want to look at the terminals as much as I can. Okay. The inside or outside the room? Inside. So you're staying inside uh, the room? Yeah. What's Archiac doing? Okay, I will go with everybody else. Except for the blob. So, so Chris has just been shut in a room? 
great. Wow. <laughs> Oh, no. Clemens has fallen. Oh, no. Clemens, Clemens has fallen twice. Though. No, he, but uh, he came in and went out, so. Yeah, Clemens oh, okay. has walked into the room. As you guys walked into the room, everyone's like, oh, geez, this is, um, okay, we're familiar with this. We know yeah, how to walk around uh, bodies. We walk with through blood, blood all the time. Yep, yeah, and guts everywhere. We, yeah, blood and guts at back at Bert's Mercs. That's why, you know, in the change room, it's got to wash off somewhere. It's full of blood. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. Blood and guts. <laughs> Clemens has walked in. It's not really, uh, was not prepared and slipped over and he's gotten blood all up one side on his right side. And as he's, he's gotten up, it's, it looks a little bit white and checks the the body he seems like he's almost wanting to throw up and he looks up and that's when he points to um Tara yeah and to 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 go outside and as he's going outside he slips and falls uh on Again. part of the dead body's uh, intestines and it gets caught around his arm and he is he shakes it off and he's now um, got the smell of uh, blood and um, intestines on him okay and then he tells you to mm-hmm. close the doors and then we so, do all that so yep. now everyone's um, outside except the blob. Yep. And the blob, if you can roll a computer operation check, a uh, straight computer operation check. I did not. No. 69. Not good enough. Not good enough. Nope. <laughs> All right. Okay. So while you're doing that, Clemens... <laughs> um, um, Got a bit of viscera on your shoulder. He looks down at the uh, ID card, which is all, all covered in blood, and he, um, you know, it's been. He's w- wiped it off on his pants, and the ID. He looks down at his data pad. Uh, uh, this ID does not match up with any of our maintenance workers. What do you mean? The man in that room is not a maintenance worker. What was you doing with that canister? Well, there was two canisters in there. One of them was hooked up to the air ventilation system. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. What was it doing? I don't know. What kind of place are you running here? The Crystal Plowers is a place where people can come to stay to look at the beautiful nebulae. And get their heads ripped off. And have maintenance workers who you don't know who they are hooking canisters up that you don't know what it is into your ventilation system. This guy is not a maintenance worker. I believe that's the point. Right. That's not going to be good when it gets out. There's going to be a pretty lax security on your side. You'll have to find out who he is. That- How? How? gonna cost you mate we were hired to kill the beastie not to find out what's wrong with your security he's right we're pest control we're not detectives if you want to change the the deal then you got to change the deal all right you guys are hired as a team to do a job to remove hostile alien life forms Correct. He's a hostile maintenance worker. If it ends up being that there's other hostiles, then it's your job to remove them. No, it's not. Not according to the job we took on, which was to remove, and I quote, hostile alien life forms, not hostile fake maintenance workers. Yeah, dead beastie. 
we're perfectly happy to do the job we were hired for. You're trying to tack on extra work for no extra pay. Right. I'm sure we're all so happy to tell everyone about all this bad maintenance work and, and that you don't know who even comes down here or looks after stuff and pumps stuff into the air. That wouldn't be a black mark on the Crystal Palace at all, would it? I could talk to the captain to provide Maybe you do that. a small bonus as an incentive. Don't be a cheap straight, you bastard. It's not a bonus. If you're making us do extra work, we require that we be paid for that work. Don't act like you're doing us a favor. If you hire us for a job, we require that you pay us for the work we do. Because the mercenary outfit we work for, they get a cut. So they're not going to be happy if you're trying to get extra work out of them that they're not going to get a cut for. You're the Crystal Palace, the greatest resort in this sector of space. Don't be cheap. We're perfectly happy to simply do the work that we agreed to. If you want extra, we require more payment. That's all there is to it. Hence the small bonus. Again, not a bonus. Well... All right, I'm not here to dictate what you are and are not here to do, but... You are trying to do just that, mate. Your job is to remove hostile alien life forms. Correct. Which should include... No. Oh, no, no, we very... No, we very clearly determined earlier that hostile alien life forms only refers to those outside of the Alliance. He doesn't look like he's outside of the Alliance, does he? Clemens looks a little bit enraged by you pointing that out. <laughs> Curse. Curses. <laughs> he does not fit the briefing. He is not a hostile alien life form. He may be hostile, I don't know. Never talked to him before he died. He's not a beastie. I will, if there's an issue that arises from this uh, unknown person then I will talk to the captain about seeing about suitably accommodating payment for your services to that's all we ask remove further hostiles I don't think he'll cause us much trouble now any friends of his that's another story but doesn't seem like much of a troublemaker right now does he dig god girl for someone so tiny, you sure do have a tongue on you. <laughs> That's why she's in charge. I see. Look. You are a right to follow I'm her. I'm not about to do extra work. That's all there is to it. Bad enough having to do any work at all. It's bad enough to do work. All right, team. Maybe huddle. What do you think? All right, well, if the guy was not dead. I, I'm pretty good at sh making him dead. And I'm sure that Sazaki is good at ripping his arms off, but also that would sort of be more important if he was still alive. I'm not exactly strong on the investigation side. Does any of you actually have anything that could be actually useful for finding out who this geezer is? <sighs> you lead, you point, Zach shoot. Yeah, that's kind of the problem, isn't it, in this case? Look, I deal more with animals than people. Or I did before I quit that line of work. I don't know. Oh, so it's up to Woodchip here then. Speaking of, where'd that blob get to? I thought he was here. Uh, before I go back to the others, I would like to look at the canister and see if the there's canister. any. Canister. Okay, so do you? How do you want to look at it, like um, at the scientific level, or with all eighteen of my eyes, I want to look at it. Yeah. Uh, I just want to read if there's a name of like a chemical on it. <laughs> ingredients if it says on the highly side. toxic, please don't connect to a ventilation system or something like that. I actually get it. I did. Thirteen. Twenty-three. Did. Twenty-three with the. Uh, minus, yeah, you had a you had a plus ten to it, right? Yep. Yep. So twenty three. Yeah. So you succeed. Cool. Is there writing on it, or am I like sniffing <sighs> it? Like what? All right, I will 
attempt to head back to the others without falling. Are you going to get through the door? The door is closed. Is there a window? No. Alright, I'll wait. <laughs> I'll wait for them to realize I'm not there. <laughs> we were debating a course of investigative action. Who are you talking to? The group at large. Ah. Um, everyone outside roll yep. against intuition. Alright. Uh, half their intuition, sorry. Roll against half intuition? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got that. Yeah, you definitely did. Uh, I, on the other hand, did not. Nor did I. <laughs> <laughs> Considering my target was 20. I'd be very impressed if you mistake. had, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if that was half your intuition was under. 87? So, Archiak, you're not surprised. But <laughs> from a dark recess down the tunnel where uh, most of the lights are not working, you, out of the corner of your eye, you sense a bit of movement. Very fast movement. And then you can, you see your character, well, uh, Archiak sees a dark, small, uh, three foot high, hairy creature rushing the group. So Archiak sort of notices it out of the corner of his eye. He head snaps around, he looks in that direction. And it looks like a giant rat, except it's frothing and foaming at the mouth and drools coming down and, you know, uh, falling uh, down behind it. And it's got pointed, raggedy ears that flop down a little bit. Long, skinny arms, longer than a rat's arms, with um, uh, claws at the end. And its teeth are very sharp, or pointy, mm. and white, and full of blood. Its fur is matted with blood and bits of flesh. And he points, and he steps back, and he yells, Duck! <laughs> he's, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> and because Archiac wasn't surprised, you get an extra negative three to your roll. An extra negative three. So the characters who are surprised are automatically go after their attackers. So um, the only person who gets Holy to crap. Go guys rolled well. I rolled terribly. Snapping around into the gun, raising it, and he looks through the sight at this beastly horrible little creature and yep. just as he starts to put pressure on the trigger, he says, bring me the chisme. <laughs> and then he Give fires. So... Roll a d6. Five. Five. You hit it in the left leg. Roll damage. Seven. Lamb loss. How do you want to do this? He's trying to hit it center mass because he wants to drop it, but the thing's darting and weaving on its charge. He snaps off the shot in the middle of the group so that he doesn't like shoot through people but I mean we were in a bit of a huddle when he saw it so he's, as he steps back and aims the rifle goes off and it recoils against his shoulder it hits it in the left hip area which wasn't quite where he was aiming but he'll take it and it sort of stumbles it's definitely in pain and it pulls itself up and then the energy shot And it gets knocked to the left. Its leg catches fire and is dangling useless. And it starts rolling around, thrashing and squealing in pain and bad hamburger smell. Oh. And it starts to demise. It starts to... 
good. <laughs> Starts to demise. Hmm. Smells like duck. And Kiak pulls the bolt up, pulls it back, ejects the spent energy casing, slams the new one forward, and he looks really pleased with himself. And said it was friendly. He's just, he's just standing there. And he goes, you're not even in the room, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you talking to? Oh, Blobby, you'd be saying something right now about you shouldn't just shoot things you haven't met before. You don't know if you're family. Is he still back in there? Should we be letting him out? Are you guys able to talk to each other at this point? Yeah. Oh. Well, the shot, um, your ears are sort of ringing. was imaginary. <laughs> but, I mean, you got the sound of the... Um... Oh, yeah, we closed the doors. We can hear out here now, Chris. Yeah, but you can hear out there. But someone did fire a gun in the middle of the That's group. That's true. That is true. And he's definitely striking a pose of, like, I did that. That was me. He thumps to Zach. Next one's yours, buddy. Next one's yours. You got it. You got this. You got this. Clemens is look shocked. Looking shocked. Uh, we better get your friend out of there in case there's more in there. Zach, can you open the door again? I'm assuming. Yeah. Or not. Yep. Blobby is on the other side. Point that Blobby. And the give sound the... Of the fans return. Yep, and the sound of the fans and air compressors return. And I will slip through the door. The noise is um, deafening once again. Once he's through the door, then? What were you still doing in there? Looking for some information uh, about our current predicaments. I believe I found some. And that would be? Well, you saw those two cylinders, one connected to the air vent. I was able to determine what they had in them. And? Uh, one of which was a broad spectrum knockout gas and the other a lethal nerve gas. It's quite deadly, quite illegal, and quite out of place for a hotel such as this. A resort. Yeah, what's up with that, Clemens? Uh, you can see, as you look at Clemens, he's um, on his data pad. And he looks up and says, with a concern expression on his face, I can't seem to raise anyone in the command center. Well, that doesn't sound good. Perhaps they've all been knocked out. The canister was empty. Which? Because that's important. Both. Both. Mm-hmm. Well, we need to get back to the command center to find out what's going on. Although I am unsure of the way unless you guys can remember which way we came. And roll IQ. None of us know we're hopelessly lost. I think I might know the way back. I'm not 100% sure. Go for it. I'll follow you. All right, so whoever's in the lead makes which an I observation. Which I believe Chris said was going to be him, so... Yep, and, and the second person, too. I succeed. So do I. Ha ha! Can't do anything to you guys. I wouldn't set that <laughs> precedent. Um. <laughs> okay, so you round several corners and backtrack a, a few times and down through a particularly dark corridor. Uh, blobby? Blobby. Uh, almost falls into a three meter hole that's um, been opened up in the floor. Um, you didn't see it because it was dark, but you, you saw it at the last second. And um, uh, Terra yep. sort of bumped into you and almost fell in as well, but you both managed to uh, 
uh, stop in time to avoid falling uh, into a three meter hole that's in the floor but the hole hasn't been ripped open it looks like it's been cut it looks like someone has cut their way through here the edges are uh very great there's some sort of pod down here shall i hop down and have a look plant pod or vehicle pod i was assuming a vehicle pod uh well i'm not assuming i'm at the back uh, let me just pop down and have a quick, quick okay. look just... headlong with about six or seven eyes uh in a circle cool. So it looks like that the pod is designed to attach to the outside of a ship and create an artificial seal. You can see that it's locked on uh, where the floor is uh, below must be uh, out, of, out of space, but there's definitely a seal there. Inside the pod, there's various instruments, um, all sort of mechanical in nature. It looks like it's um, a pod that's manually flown there's no really identifying features but what you do find are several uh, what looks to be like animal cages that are all empty inside and handwritten on the side of one of these cages on a metal plate is scrawled the words uncle ernie loves your baby and the bottom of the pod is littered with bones and remains of people that had once been wearing uh, maintenance crew uniforms. Uh, so, Clemens, any idea what your resort would have done to draw the attention of a mad scientist terrorist sort? And he's like, "What? why, what's going on? He's sort of at the back not leading the way no nobody poke any holes in the floor or we might all get sucked out into space weren't you supposed to warn us if we were in a spot where we shouldn't fire weapons no that was rogers oh he's gone well don't fire any weapons oh. hear that you two no weapons why not what did here. you find um, there's a little spaceship here, attached to the hull. A spaceship? Yes. There appears to only be a thin bit of metal between us and outer space right now. Look, something sent this and possibly other things? How many cages are down there, uh, whatever your name is? Blobby. <laughs> Clemens mutters <laughs> to himself. Blobby. It's, it's Blobby. <laughs> I don't know if we're well, sticking with that one yet. But five or six? Seven. Seven if it's one thing per cage more, if not. And a lot of dead bodies. Yeah, how many people are you missing? I think three. You should work on keeping a better active duty roster. Um, just a suggestion. All the cages are empty and open, or correct. Locked? Okay. All the cages are open and empty. It's possible whatever you shot back there could have been buried in these cages, meaning there's at least six more. Yeah, that's what I said, like a second ago. When I said we we had three missing, we recovered two. So technically only one is missing still. And how many bodies are down there? They're kind of in pieces. Estimate, rough estimate. I see. How many heads you got? <laughs> uh, I count three skulls three three and a half skulls three and a half. if you okay. put them all together they make three and a half 
<laughs> so four workers, unless you employed anyone that had one and a half heads. Well, it could be entirely possible that these could be impersonators. All those deceased could be impersonators. I think it's more likely the other way around, that the, the impersonators are still walking around. Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be tricky to hire people on to infiltrate your resort if they're like, hi, your job is to go and probably get eaten by the things you're bringing. Maybe we should go around and check everyone. Say, hi, me Zach, me kill. Are you who you think you are? That is Clemens is not just actually a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to get to the control center and find out what's going on. You're going to want to make sure it's not filled with gas, mate. Right. Yeah, we don't really know what areas are safe or how much of your resort has been taken over. Either way, we still got to get back to the exit. There's only one way in here. Good news. We can probably walk around with our weapons out. I don't think your guests are going to mind much. If there's any left. How many cages did you say you saw? Seven. So we can assume there's still six of those beasties here somewhere. If they were the things in the cage, and not, say, the pilots of the pod craft? I don't think that was a pilot of anything. Oi, Clementine! Clemens. Yeah, 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 whatever. Um, have you had those things on this station before? No. You sure? Any other info? We assumed we were hit by an interstellar object which introduced the howls. Uh, oh, I think this... you were. It was just intentional. Yeah. This has obviously changed the dynamics of the situation, and obviously it is an attack. Seems so. Again, what did you do to annoy anyone? Uh, we haven't done anything, but uh, places like us can be targeted by the unscrupulous, I guess. And what would killing everybody in this resort gain anyone? Everyone knows Uncle Ernie's crazy like that. Yeah. Who's Uncle Ernie? It's the guy really? that made the fart. The what? The inventor the of the fart. You know, the tall bunny rabbit, ears. Like people have you not met a fop before yeah i have but they were made they're engineered hey is this such a weird concept it was like you're engineered yes what you I think humans really. normally have chameleon skin well you know honestly a lot of you sort of look the same but so is just ernie geezer here or has he got followers or is it just a crazy, unhappy fop? Or what? what, what what's going on? Exactly did the message say? Blob guy? Something about Uncle Ernie being crazy? I... I it said Uncle I, Ernie is crazy. I can have another look. I head back now. Uncle, Uncle Ernie loves your baby. It says Uncle Ernie loves your baby. Oh, that just doesn't sound good at all, does it? Not... <laughs> <laughs> Whose baby? Yours. yours. Who's yours? <laughs> Is that a name? Anybody on the resort have a baby? No. Anyone on the resort called yours? No. I guess we're stuck. I'm confused. Anyway, he... He's some weird, 
crazy scientist. He created the thought and he just does whatever he wants, basically. He is a criminal. So what are we going to do? <sighs> Try not to be killed by large rat creatures? Well, he might not be the only one. Like, not just the, the, the rat creatures, but whatever brought the thing that is... There could be other humanoid geezers. There could be. A whole a whole bunch of fops who are hopping mad. Haven't seen any fop yet, but who knows? Could be. Well, how big is that pod? We know at least there's one geezer that's dead in the other room there. Possibly killed by one of his own little creations he let out. Is the pod only big enough for one? But is there more coming? Is there more geezers here? Well, this, the, all this started two days ago, right? So... Right. So this pod attached itself to the station two days ago. If any others were coming, that would be a bit of a delayed sort of reinforcement. Oh, they needed to let dead guy there release the toxin and the sleep agent. Why both? If you're going to kill well, everyone, thinking... you don't need them unconscious. If Yeah, but maybe they don't want to kill any. That would be the only reason. Maybe they're not killing the guests, they're killing the staff. Kill the staff, knock out the guests, and then what? Rob them? Steal from them? I guess they're rich. I don't understand where the beasties fit in, though. They're not controllable by the looks of it, since they killed the guy in with the gas chamber. That could just be Uncle Ernie having fun. And why does he want babies? Don't know. Glad I just do the shooting and someone else is going to do the thinking. All right. Looks like the mission parameters have changed. Just a little bit. Yes. That could mean we get paid more. I it guess. It does if I've got anything to say about it. Which I certainly will. Contract was clear. If we end up saving the whole station from a terrorist, I think that's a little bit extra, yes. Alright, we've got to get to the control room. I think well, I know do you the know way. the way? Okay, lead on. And after about 20 minutes, he finally finds the doors to the elevator. Battle Lords of the 23rd Century is available from 23rd Century Productions, LLC. Starring Emily as Tara, Shadow as some sort of nameless blob, Ken as Zack, Ghost as Archiac, and Raven Insane as the Storyteller. Sounds and music provided by Sirenscape, tabletop audio, and other licensed options. This has been a Crit Fail production. Thanks for listening! Last time on 23... Blah! <laughs> <laughs> Last time on 23rd um, Blah! 23, <laughs> channel 23. We're on channel 23. That's what we're doing. Battle Lords of 23. Last Crit time file on... is now 23. Last time on Battle Lords of the 23rd Century. <laughs> the Burks Mercs group, Dirty Quads, had been hired by Space Systems Development Corporation to quietly exterminate a dangerous pest infestation on a deep space resort called the Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace is a small hub-spoke configuration set out in the... Blah. Somewhere. Um, where was it? I'm going to have to re-record this. Uh, the Killing Fields? Crystal Palace? Can you guys remember where it was? Yeah, uh, it's in space. In some, it was in... Uh, yeah, Nebula. just looking at the... The speaker in the ceiling going, the narrator's bloody useless. Control V, Control F. I just have Crystal Palace very old model station, artificial gravity. It used to be a mining station, didn't it? I don't know, but... Um... What was it mining in space? Space dust. Or was it just a place of miners, like a whole bunch of little people? Yes, it's where they sent all the children. It's the children's resort. I always thought it was a football team based in England.
<laughs> Last time on Battle Lords of the 23rd Century. The Max Tur. Uh, the Max. <laughs> The narrator. The narrator. It's not even us. It's not even us. Yeah. We're not doing anything. Last time on Battle Lords of the 23rd Century, the Burt's Mercs team, the Dirty Quads, have been hired by Space Systems Development Corporation to exterminate a dangerous pest infestation on a deep space resort called the Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace is a small hub and spoke configuration which has artificial gravity and uh, 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 orbits a interestingly (laughs) beautiful nebulae or nebula or nebulae. (laughs) Their orders were to specifically... Um, eliminate any unauthorized foreign organisms or hostile alien life forms called howls. Howls. Without alerting or disturbing the guests. After a brief trip on a, a public transport, uh, the team found themselves being introduced to Captain Smith and the communications officer Roger, as well as the second in command. Uh, first mate, lieutenant, first mate, Clemens. <laughs> He's not a lieutenant. <laughs> it's a stocky Orion. Oh. First mate, lieutenant, first mate, Clemens. He's not a lieutenant. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Keeping that. <laughs> On arrival to... <laughs> On arrival to the <laughs> Crystal Space... Po- On arrival to the Crystal Palace... The team met Captain Smith and the communications officer, Roger, and the first mate, Clemens. There they discovered that the uh, space station had been hit by an interstellar debris, which they thought was had uh, originated from a thousand years ago. And ever since being hitted, hitted, ever since being, str- ever since being, ever since the space Ever since, fuck me, ever since Crystal Palace had been struck by the thousand-year-old debris, there had been noises reported in the lower decks. And what they originally thought was going on with the space station, with the metal, possibly metal fatigue, um, sending in a repair team, that computer picked up disturbing audio. The metal fatigue had developed an attitude of claws and growling. You're not dealing with amateurs, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Meow. (laughs) Meow. Wait, what? The editor has a question. (laughs) Slash. (laughs) What are the meows about? (laughs) <laughs> the growls. We're listening. They're like, we've picked up this disturbing audio. And they press play, and it's just someone going, meow, <laughs> meow, grr. The editor does have a question. The captain sent in a security team to recover the bodies and seal the area, but they only found two of the three bodies, and none of those were in one piece. Showing the photos to. The Dirty Quads. One of the characters. Uh, what's Emily's name? Tara. Emily's name is Emily, but... Oh, Tara. Okay, so is in... And what are you? You're a gen human. Yeah. I'm On visual way. inspection of the photos, the gen human known as Tara... Promptly vomited on the floor. He'll also tell you if it's safe to shoot without endangering the structural integrity and integrity. Inter- he will also integrity? tell you. How many buttons are there? Don't you dare. Cypher's so looking at all the buttons. Cypher. He wants to hit every button on every floor. 
Oh, is that where Cypher's gone? To the and 21st she's going to get out on every floor and go, mm, not very interesting. Mm, oh, there's a monster with a baseball bat. Mm, oh, floor four, much more interesting. That was fun. Adam's like, all oh, my decisions are coming back to haunt me. <laughs> you come across the body of what looks to be like a maintenance worker who's dressed in a white jumpsuit similar to yours, uh, except it's covered in blood from the headless part down so there's no head from the headless part down combat initiative so the first thing that happens in combat round is determining initiative initiative determines who in fact acts first during a combat round the game's master will determine the initiative of hostile aliens and creatures not um, controlled by the players the players have the lowest initiative acts first the character with the second lowest initiative acts second and so on until every character blah 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 determining initiative to determine the Initiative the uh, roll two d twenty and subtract and subtract and subtract and subtract and, and subtract your character's initiative modifier, <laughs> which is determined by your agility. There we go. Inish, inish, <laughs> we're doing it too now. Yeah, this, we're moving. That, we're moving that. through this as fast as we ever go through anything. Faster. That's even. right. But you know what it's called. Down the rabbit hole. <laughs> we supposed to go but... into the pod? And we were talking about font. And you guys are just talking. Nonsense? Nonsense. <laughs> what do you want it us to be secret... talking? That's how ironic. It's like you guys knew. Knew what? 